In this video, I'll be discussing if and how the Apple Watch Ultra, Whoopstrap 4.0 and Oura Ring 3 were able to detect and keep track of my COVID-19 infection. Now, as many of you may know, these wearable devices are designed to measure various health metrics, such as skin temperature, heart rate, heart rate variability, but also sleep quality. And I was curious to see if they would be able to pick up on the fact that I was infected with the COVID-19 virus. So I decided to put them to the test. I wanted to see if these devices noticed there was something wrong with my body and if they did, how long it would take them. Now, as always, we're gonna analyze this by looking at the different measurements that they provide. Hello everyone. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, before I go into the details, I want to make clear that I'm not a medical doctor and this video is not meant to be medical advice. I'm simply sharing my own experience and the data that these devices collected. Now, let's get to it. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought a lot of attention to the importance of monitoring your health and some popular devices for doing this include the Apple Watch Ultra, the Whoopstrap 4.0 and the Oura Ring 3. But how would any of these devices be able to infer that you might have an infection? Well, I would say that the main way of doing this is by keeping track of your normal values, or in other words, your baseline, and checking if any of the newest measurements deviate from this in a specific way. Changes in the measurements of, for instance, skin temperature, resting heart rate, breathing rate, and heart rate variability are some of the indicators that could be used to predict a potential infection like COVID-19. Now, as you probably know, an infection can lead to an increase in body temperature and in extreme cases of fever. It might also result in a higher resting heart rate while your body is fighting the infection. And at the same time, your heart rate variability would then likely go down. Now, with that in mind, I decided to put these three devices to the test and see if they're able to pick up on my infection and provide valuable data and insights. Let's start off by looking at the temperature deviations for each night measured by the Aura Ring 3, which is displayed in this plot right here. Now the Aura Ring actually measures deviations in skin temperature, so not absolute temperature, which is displayed here on the vertical axis in both degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. Now each dot here is a single night of measurements, and in red I indicated the moment I was most likely exposed to someone who turned out to be COVID positive, and this is most likely the moment I got infected. And as you can see, I also included about two weeks of baseline data before the actual exposure. Now my symptoms started for me about two days after the exposure and I was actually still PCR negative about 14 hours before system onset. And my antigen test was also still negative when I had my first symptoms. Interestingly, the Aura Ring did not detect any increase in my body temperature yet the first night after I started having minor symptoms. However, the next night it did detect an increase in skin temperature as you can see right here. And indeed, the next day I had a minor fever, which matches with the temperature increase that the Aura Ring 3 detected. And the day after that, I actually started feeling a lot better already and I didn't have any fever anymore. But what about the other metrics? Did these also show a change? Well, in the middle here, you can see my resting heart rate as measured by the Aura Ring 3. And this was indeed increased the same night that the Aura Ring also detected an increase in my temperature. And though I have had values like this before, as you can see in the beginning of this period, the app did indicate to me that something was off with this high resting heart rate value. Finally, what about heart rate variability or HRV in short? Well, this didn't show much of a change. A lower heart rate variability is generally considered a bad sign. And we do not see any decreases in my heart rate variability in the time that I had the infection. We actually see an increased HRV the night I felt I recovered quite a bit from the infection. Though I wasn't yet fully recovered, after this night things got a lot better. So it makes sense that this night I had a low resting heart rate and a high heart rate variability. And of course my temperature was in my normal range for this night. So in the case of my infection right here, the Aura Ring was able to detect an increased temperature and a high resting heart rate before I actually measured a minor fever myself. However, it didn't detect any signs anything was wrong before I tested positive. But what about the whoop strap? Well, those results are displayed right here, again with the skin temperature on top, but now the absolute skin temperature as measured by the whoop strap. Now you can see that during the same night as the Aura Ring indicated, just before I had a fever during the day, the whoop strap detected the highest temperature detected for this entire period, as you can see right here. And similar to the Aura Ring, it showed me a warning in the app that my temperature was higher than normal. And it also detected an increased resting heart rate for this night, as you can see right here, again similar to what the Aura Ring showed. And you can see here on the bottom, it didn't detect a dip in my heart rate variability. 
And again, also similar to what we saw for the Aura Ring, the night I felt I recovered quite a bit, I had a low resting heart rate and a high heart rate variability, which are both good things. So overall, the Aura Ring and Whoop Strap seem to take very similar measurements and detected roughly the same patterns. But what about the Apple Watch Ultra? So by chance, I only started wearing the Ultra just before the exposure, so I don't have the same baseline measurements in these plots. However, the general patterns shown by the Apple Watch Ultra right here are very similar to what we saw for the Aura Ring and the Whoop Strap. We again see that the night before I had a minor fever, there was an increase in my temperature and also a rise in my resting heart rate. Though interestingly, the drop detected in resting heart rate the night after is not that drastic. So we saw for the other two devices there was a very strong drop in resting heart rate, but for the Apple Watch Ultra this is less severe. So if we go back now to the whoop strap, we saw a big drop here. And also for the Aura Ring there was quite a big drop with my lowest resting heart rate in any of the measurements. And the same is true for the whoop strap right here, but we don't see it as strongly for the Apple Watch. This makes me think that the Apple Watch might calculate the resting heart rate slightly differently than the other devices. Now heart rate variability was a bit more difficult for me to judge since the Apple Watch takes several measurements over the night. However overall we again don't see big changes in heart rate variability, but we also don't see a strong increase here in heart rate variability for this night where the other two watches did show a strong increase. So here again we have the whoop strap with a really strong increase and also the aura ring showed a strong increase, but this wasn't true here for the Apple Watch. So what can we conclude from this? Well, first of all, all three devices seem to detect roughly the same patterns in temperature and resting heart rate during my COVID-19 infection and all were able to pick up on this to varying degrees. However, the way that they actually present this to the end user was very different. In the apps of the aura ring and the whoop strap, the user interface showed me quite clearly that there was a deviation from my baseline and that something might be wrong. The Apple Health app on the other hand did not present me with any indications and I had to look it up for myself. This for me at least shows that purely as health trackers, the whoop strap and aura ring are easier to use and their apps have been structured to present the data as clearly as possible. And overall, I'm generally quite happy with the performance of both these devices since I didn't have any major symptoms and they were both able to detect this. However, in my case, they weren't able to detect any differences from my baseline before I actually tested positive. So in my specific case, it wasn't useful as a warning system of an infection, but it was useful as an indication of a minor fever and that I should take some time to recover. Now, one thing I wanna mention is how I would use these health trackers during my recovery, but I first wanted to mention something about the accuracy of these devices. I've previously shown that the Apple Watch is great at measuring your heart rate in any scenario, and that all these devices are pretty good at measuring your heart rate when there's not too much movement, which is of course especially true during sleep. So I trust that the resting heart rate measurements and HRV measurements of all devices are pretty good. But what about the average skin temperature measurements that they take during the night? How do these compare to your core body temperature? Well, I tested this for the previous generation of Aura Ring by also taking a rectal core body temperature measurement immediately after getting up. I said, what, what, in the butt. And those results are displayed right here, where each dot is a matching measurement of the temperature measurements taken with the thermometer on the Y axis and the temperature deviation as measured by the Aura Ring along the horizontal axis. As you can see, there's a pretty strong correlation. And what I think is more important that each time I had an increased core body temperature, the Aura Ring also detected a strong positive temperature deviation. Now with that I mean is that for instance in these three cases where my temperature was a lot higher than normal, the Aura Ring also detected a quite significant temperature deviation between 0.5 and 1.2 degrees Celsius. So in terms of measurements, this is looking pretty good for the Aura Ring. And this is even still the older generation with fewer temperature sensors. Now I didn't do these temperature tests yet for the other devices, but since the Whoop Strap and Apple Watch generally showed similar patterns to the Aura Ring, I would expect that these should also be able to detect at least significant temperature changes. Now as I'm recording this, I feel a lot better after taking plenty of rest, but I'm not yet fully recovered and I still had a positive antigen test this morning. So how will I use the data from these devices moving forward to guide my recovery? Well, I will mainly use them to track my recovery and I want to make sure that my resting heart rate and heart rate variability get back but also stay at their normal values. And once I test negative, I will start doing sports again, but I will keep tracking all these metrics and make sure I don't overdo it in the beginning. Now, before I close off, I did leave out one important metric that could also have increased because of the infection, the respiratory rate or breathing rate. However, first a quick side note, 
If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion. During an infection, it could be that the inflammation and mucus make it harder for you to breathe, leading to an increased respiratory rate. And that is displayed right here for the Aura Ring on top, the Whoop Strap in the middle and the Apple Watch Ultra on the bottom. Interestingly, both the Aura Ring and the Whoop Strap detected a decrease in my respiratory rate the night after the symptoms started, as you can see right here and right here. However, only the Whoop Strap detected a strong increase in my respiratory rate the night before I had my fever during the day. We do see some increase for the Aura Ring, but it's not that strong. Just looking at the general patterns of the respiratory rate measurements, all these devices do seem to vary a lot more in their measurements than what we saw for instance for temperature and resting heart rate. This makes me think that some of these measurements might be less reliable, however it's difficult to say which ones are actually the least reliable. I would need to compare them to some reference device to be sure which one is most accurate. I do think it's a good sign that the whoop strap here detected an increase in my respiratory rate, but we cannot be sure of anything, it would still be wrong. Now, if you are thinking about getting the Whoop Strap, an Apple Watch, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. The Apple Watch, for instance, is particularly good at tracking your heart rate and measuring your sleep stages, and it really outperforms other devices when it comes to these two measurements, as I showed in my recent video, which you might want to check out right here. I would still say that for overall health tracking, the Whoop Strap and Aura Ring are both much easier to use though.